Hey there, today is my birthday. This is Tracy. And I have always loved my birthday, like way more than regular people do. Um, but this year it feels really different. And I've been trying to understand why I'm not as excited as I usually am. It's not the number. While 57 is a really freaking scary number, it's, it's not that. Um, I've been trying to put my finger on it and understand, like with all of these new feelings that I'm getting, I'm doing this like peel off the onion, understand like what's behind it. And if you'd like to hear how cognitive dissonance has really gripped me again, stay tuned. Because things like this might be happening to you as well. If you like what you hear, please subscribe. If I hit a nerve with you, leave a comment. The best part of these videos is everyone leaving a comment down below because we engage in a conversation and it opens up and it, it's an aha moment for many people when we go through different topics. So engage with me, I would love that. Do you all know what cognitive dissonance is? Cognitive dissidence, the actual definition, is it refers to a situation involving conflicting attitudes, beliefs, or behaviors. So here's my example. If you asked me a month ago how I felt about my birthday, I would say that I love my birthday. It's like a holy day. And I actually claim the entire month as birthday month. And I have memories of making my birthday a really big deal and I could never process people not caring about their birthday. It just didn't make sense to me because it was so ingrained in me that it was so important to be able to have a great day on your birthday. This year, as I'm healing from the PTSD and opening the layers of my life, I'm discovering things that sometimes are really hard to hear and they hurt. You might know about the whole um, learn that your life was a lie, maybe your marriage was a lie, or maybe that you've been abused by your family of origin and your whole life was a lie. To me, I've learned that. <laughs> this is cognitive dissonance, to think that things that were one way were really another and that our memories were lying to us. Mine certainly were but I know that they were there to protect me from painful memories. There are many pieces of this puzzle that we have to unravel. And this month, I figured out more as I reflected on my birthday. If this was the ghost of birthdays past, I would learn that I never really had a birthday party. If I did, I don't have any memory of it. The kind, you know, the princess and um, the cake that looks like Barbie. I never had that. Every child should have that. That's probably why I was like nutty cray cray for my son's birthdays that were over the top and um, just the best I could give to him so that he would have those memories. I really remember nothing from my early life. But in high school, or junior high school, when I first moved to Connecticut from New York, I had buck teeth and really funny clothes because my parents shopped at um, something Ward, Montgomery Ward. Yes, it was in upstate New York and it was, it was kind of a, a cheap, ugly clothing store. So when I hit Connecticut, um, I wasn't very fashionable <laughs> and I had a hard time making friends. My family had a house in upstate New York and we summered there and since I was an August baby we never had a party. In fact you couldn't even find a cake in our town unless it was um, Fryhoffer's was a bakery. I don't know if they're still around up there but um, you know it was a box cake like Entenmann's or for a special treat I would have a pie because someone in town made pies and sold them at the little store. But those were my memories, never having my friends near me because we were, you know, in another state. And while I did have friends there, I don't remember any parties. I don't remember any hoopla. So I created my own. 
I remember my sweet 16 birthday. Now, everyone was having sweet 16 parties and sleepovers. And I was alone, sitting on a lawn chair, crying, thinking about how my family was out on the boat. And I wasn't having a sweet 16. And now I can hear my little Tracy say, why didn't I matter? To credit my husband, ex-husband, and his family, they always were really good at making me feel special on my birthday. In fact, on my 50th birthday, it was as grand as a wedding. We had um, bouquets of flowers attached with giant ribbons on all of the trees that lined the driveway. And um, my sister-in-law went to all these stores to buy Twinkies. I love Twinkies and Hostess and Ring Dings and Yodels. And so she bought hundreds of Twinkies and then lined the driveway. One Twinkie, one giant bulb of flower. One Twinkie flower, Twinkie flower, Twinkie flower. And at night, they put a candle in every Twinkie. And imagine this long driveway filled with beautiful trees with bows and flowers on them. And then they lit it up with candles in the Twinkies. It was a very cool birthday party. Um, it was like magical. But the reality was, this is the cognitive dissidence part. Like that was the memory, right? That's what I held in my head. And I'm not saying that was not the part I should hold. But the part that I didn't get was the reality was I wanted a barbecue. Like, you know, hot dogs, hamburgers, paper plates, plastic forks and just easy, comfortable. But my in-laws, we were having it at their house. They would never stand for that. In fact, paper plates and plastic forks are completely against the law in my mother-in-law's house. It's, it's like a class thing. We don't do paper. Um, but she finally agreed that we could have paper plates because she found these really special ones at a museum store. And um, she refused to budge on the silverware. So um, everyone's out on the lawn, they're eating their filet mignons. We had to give them steak knives, right? So we gave everybody steak knives. And um, at the end, during the cleanup, one of the knives was missing. And it went into a little box all lined up. So they knew that one was missing. And everybody went crazy. They looked at the garbage, they blamed me. It turned out that it had fallen off of someone's plate in the dark and it was laying on the lawn and we found it. But that sort of like drama was exactly what I didn't want. I wanted a nice peaceful birthday. Um, and the idea of showing me how they loved me was really more control because they determined what we were going to eat, where we were going to have it. Um, everything that I wanted was sort of a compromise. So I look at that and now I'm analyzing it going, wait a second, I didn't get what I wanted. I didn't, I, I got a party and it was lovely, but they controlled it, right? So I'm looking at this and um, trying to analyze it. So I'm gonna share a few birthdays with you. Don't worry, it won't be long. Um, another birthday that I won't forget is in 2011. My husband had asked for a divorce in May, August birthday, May. So my therapist asked, my um, husband to give me space. I was having to deal with um, packing a house, selling a house, moving, moving into an apartment for the first time in 45 years and having a son go off to college. And I was already freaked out about that. Um, I was nervous and, and worried and, and I didn't know how I would survive without him. Big part of my life and I know it was what he needed, but I was struggling. It's, it's that empty nester thing. And so my ex-husband and his family honored my, my therapist's request to give me a little bit of space. While my husband acted almighty giving me space and this processing time, he and his family were actually using this time to get their ducks in a row. And 
their plan, I found out, their heartless plan was to file for divorce right after my birthday. So let my son go to college, let me get through the birthday, and um, then they were going to file in New York so that I couldn't afford to fly back and forth and it would be done like that. Um, that was their plan, was to out-money me in the New York court systems. So my lawyer decided that we were going to use the Trojan horse attack. Attack when they were not suspecting. They were giving me space on my birthday. They knew how important it was to me. And we filed papers on him on that day. And it came completely out of the blue to him. Just like when he asked for divorce came completely out of the blue for me. Before we served them with papers, my mother-in-law called me that morning to belt out a happy birthday song. Hitting them with the divorce papers later that day caused an unrecoverable narcissist injury to all of them, and I never spoke to them again. I saw them in court, but the daggers could kill you if you saw them from these three people. The following year, I decided to take my birthday back, and I threw myself a party um, complete with jello shots and sangria. It was just a really fun part. The whole day of taking back my birthday was kind of overshadowed because I had my first kiss with 3X and it was dreamy at the time because I felt so unlovable from my divorce. But it now feels icky that it happened on that day. The next year on my birthday I was actually in St. John um, in the Caribbean with 3X. Um, many of you have seen the video where I paid for him and the deal was he was going to buy me, um, take me out to this dinner at this restaurant that I just wanted to go to so badly. Um, right on the water, romantic, beautiful. And when we got there, um, he sat at the bar and waited for the table and I went um, into the girls' room to freshen up from a, a day of beach and sand and everything. And when I came back, he was sitting at the bar and he had the wine list opened and he asked me, so what's your budget for this dinner? And I explained to him that he was supposed to be taking me out to dinner and he said, I can't afford this. So I paid for dinner, $250 for dinner. He ordered a crazy expensive bottle of wine on my tab and uh, that was pretty much how that went. So another birthday like fail, if you will, right? And last year for my birthday, I met Lizelle, who for those of you who don't know, my 3X is next supply. And uh, you can watch videos with us together because we're really good friends now. And um, that was a good birthday. It's a quiet birthday. I don't usually have quiet birthdays. But as I review all of these wounds, and I'm trying to understand why my birthday was so important to me to, to, to make a big thing, it caused me to look back at the sadness, and this is what I've learned. I'm at peace knowing that I finally understand that I don't have to make everything special. Everything is just as it should be. And I don't have to try so hard. People will love me and they will be there. Tonight I'll be on a rooftop bar with all my friends and I welcome the fun without any expectations. I am enough. And now I can really take back my birthday. I understand the deep-rooted seeds of disappointment. And I told my little Tracy, it's okay. This is Tracy. I hope this helped you remember something in your childhood to look back on. Something that we can identify patterns in our life. Happy birthday to me, and take care of yourselves. This is Tracy. That's all I've got.